Okay, so we didn't get a chance to talk on Tuesday about Lesson 12, so I'm going to make that time up today. And uh, if you would, go ahead and find Lesson 12 in your notes and complete the packet as you watch the video. I'm going to start with the entry task, and we're going to identify using a graph or a table each of the following, like information from the following functions. We're going to find the y-intercept, the x-intercept, if they exist. And we're going to determine whether the function is increasing or decreasing. So I'm going to start with f of x. f of x equals 3x minus 1. And in order to do that, we need to look at the uh, function, so Grafton Desmos. So um, Grafton Desmos, you see that you have this red line. This is the 3x minus 1 function. It has a, a y-intercept at 0, negative 1, and an x-intercept at 0, 0.333. Or, or one third. It's also a line that's increasing as we move from left to right. So a line that is steep like this, going from lower left to upper right is an increasing function. And that tells us that we know three pieces of information from looking at the graph of this function. The y-intercept, the x-intercept, and the fact that the function is increasing. We do the same thing with g of x. Again, I'm going to go ahead and graph 4.5 times 3 to the power of uh, x in Desmos. And we get this exponential curve relationship. The exponential curve relationship shows us that there is a y-intercept at 0, comma 4.5. If you remember, I've set it, and I've tried to be consistent. This curve never touches the x-axis. So there's actually no x-intercept. And because of what we saw in the previous uh, graph, the graph of this exponential function, it's always increasing. Even though this is really, really flat, as you move from left to right, you're gaining in, in height or in an elevation just by a little, little bit. It's not until you get to around negative three, maybe even negative four, that you start to see the function dramatically increase. But it is an increasing function. Continuing on with the notes, we're talking about the features of the function so much so that we don't even need to bother graphing them. We really, from observation from looking at a graph in a table, should know now or be able to recognize that m is an important feature of a linear equation. m, if it's positive, means the function is increasing. And m, if it's negative, means the function is decreasing. The second feature that we should be able to determine from looking at the equation and nothing else is that b, as in the y-intercept, is the initial value. It's the starting point. So we can specifically state what's going to happen for a linear function just by knowing those two pieces of information. Like in the first one, f of x equals negative 2x plus 3. The plus 3 is hanging out there with the b. It's not multiplying x. It's a constant. And it's the initial value. It's the, the y-intercept, the starting point. Also, because the negative 2 is multiplying x, that makes negative 2 the m, and it's negative, so the function is a decreasing function. The same can be said of, of g of x. Uh, since it's plus 1, 1 is the initial value. Since the 4 is multiplying x, it's like m in mx plus b. And 4 is positive, that means the function's an increasing function. Okay, I didn't answer h of x because you need some practice. But I will remind you that these are backwards for a reason, which means that you're going to be careful what you select as your initial value and what you select to determine whether the function is increasing or decreasing. I right, go ahead and turn the page. Let's keep working on the next one. If you consider an exponential function now, so exponential functions are of the form a times b to the power of x. We can still tell if the function is increasing or decreasing and the y-intercept. We will not have an x-intercept because exponential functions don't cross the x-axis. For the exponential functions, construct tables of values between negative 2 and 2. Well, that's not going to happen. Oh, Madrion, that's not going to happen. But I do know that I can say what 0 is. And so uh, 0, if I put a 0 where x is, I get 2 to the 0. That's 1. 4 times 1, that's 4. So I guess I get a 4 back just by putting a zero where x is located and simplifying. That also happens in the other f of x. That if I put a zero as the exponent, one half to the zero is one. Four times one is four. And then I fill out the table completely. 
uh, using plugging in numbers that I think are, are intelligent numbers. So if I plug in a one, I get four times two to the first, that's eight. I must be doubling, so I'm gonna cut in half, cut in half, cut in half. And because the difference between this function and this function is the two and the one half, that means that these numbers actually flip. So eight, four, two, one, one half. It gives me this picture just by plotting the points, like zero, four, as in right there. And by plotting this table over here, we get this picture. It's curved. Do your best to make it look like they never cross the x-axis, and they increasingly get steeper as you move from left to right. Or over here, it gets increasingly steeper as you move from right to left. We're able to tell from looking at these functions what the y-intercept is and if the function is increasing. I mean, look right here. The, the y-intercept is 4. That's the 4 from the function. We also have an increasing function because we're doubling every time. In the other problem, the y-intercept is also 4 because there's a 4 right there. But we are decreasing because we're cutting in half for every x we go to the right or, or gain. So therefore, we're able to determine that if a in a times b to the x is positive, we have a positive y-intercept or, or negative. But whatever a is, is going to be the y-intercept. We also have it true that if b is greater than 1, for example, in this problem, b was a 2 and 2 is greater than 1, we have an increasing function. But if b is between 0 and 1, so like 1 half, then we have a decreasing function. So we'll use those three facts in order to find the y-intercept and determine if the function's increasing and decreasing, or decreasing. Uh, because the three is out front, it's the y-intercept. And because the four is in parentheses, x is its exponent, four is greater than one, we have an increasing function. For part b, the y-intercept, is at 0 and 3 fourths, or 0 and 3 fourths. Um, and then 5 halves, 5 halves is greater than 1. So that means that this exponential function is an increasing function. Uh, for letter C, the y-intercept is 0, 15. And that's because in the formula, in the equation, 15 is the initial value. So if you put a 0 where x is, you get 15 times 1. And so I get a 15 right there. However, 0 0.5 is less than 1, so therefore this function is a decreasing function. It looks something like this one on the right. Okay. So please do the closing. Uh, let's go ahead and answer the exit ticket. Um, the closing being you can determine the growth factor, you can determine the y-intercept. Um, this is actually wrong. Huh, I should go work on that one. Make sure the learning targets match. I would say your learning targets are, can you determine if the function is increasing or decreasing? Can you determine if it has uh, specific initial values? And you are done. For the exit ticket, use the equations below, modeled in function notation, to answer the questions that follow. So to find the y-intercept for each function, remember it's added on, or it's multiplied on, or it's multiplied on, or it's added on. Those are the y-intercepts of a function especially a function written in simplest form. That's the best way to um, utilize what we're learning now in a later class. Okay. Uh, find the growth factor of the exponential function. Well, g of x and h of x are exponential functions because they have exponents. And the growth factor is what's in parentheses. So for g of x, 2 is in parentheses. 2 is the growth factor. For h of x, 0 0.7 is in parentheses. So 0.7 is the growth factor. One of them is a model that grows, and one of them is a model that decays. And it's because of the size of the number that's in parentheses. Because there's a 2, 2 is bigger than 1. For g of x, the 2 makes the function bigger, or, or will continue to look like it has more volume. h of x has a 0 0.7, and 0 0.7 is between 0 and 1, and so it's going to forever diminish. In fact, it's so important for us to know or recognize that fact. If b is greater than 1, we call that an exponential growth. If b is between 0 and 1, we call that exponential decay. If b is negative, 
you got problems because having a growth factor or an exponential factor that's a negative really plays havoc on the legitimacy of an equation being continuous and bounded. All right, this is my last slide. Last one you need to work on. You need to do the problem set. So the problem set starts at the end of lesson 12. I think it's well, whatever, it's the end of lesson 12. Um, make sure that you do your best work, answer the full page. Next up is lesson 13. So stay tuned. Here we go.